Hi there, this is Shelley Weir, and welcome to our next episode of CEO Conversations. I am the president and CEO of the Florida Institute of CPAs, and I am so excited to be joined by one of my dear friends in the profession and someone that truly inspires me every time that we get together and, and talk through um, the challenges that are facing the CPA profession right now. I'm thrilled to introduce Ricky Lavina, who is the co-founder and CEO of TaxFile. Uh, TaxFile is based here in Florida, though certainly a national organization. We're going to talk through a little bit today what TaxFile is and what they do and how they can help you, employers, in the short term as in today um, with some of your talent challenges and some of the solutions that they have architected over the recent years. So, Ricky, thank you for joining me today. Thanks for having me, Shelly. Hopefully we talk about things other than just the challenges, you know? <laughs> yes, exactly. Solutions, right? Everybody yeah, wants to point out what's wrong challenge. and nobody wants to talk about solutions. <laughs> Definitely a, there's 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 positive stuff in there too. <laughs> exactly, exactly. So I think, Ricky, when did we first meet? I think it's been, what, maybe two years now? Something like that. I came down to Miami and met with you and the team, and I feel like we just hit it off right away. I was just so inspired um, by what you guys have built and created at TaxFile there. It's been probably about two years, right? Maybe a little longer? Uh, at least two years, probably a little longer. We're in our, 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 we're still in Coconut Grove, but we were in the other office in Coconut Grove. So we've been in, in where I'm sitting right now for about a year and a half, um, and you came down with a team, and it was it was a blast. We got to see the startup uh, kind of culture. and Yeah. You know, that's, uh, that's a rarity, and I guess, in, in our profession, right? It really is. It really is. Well, I'm super excited to to have this conversation today. So let's dig in first and just tell our listeners a little bit about your background um, in the profession and kind of what led you to create this company first. Sure. So um, obviously I'm a CPA and um, I graduated from the University of Miami in 2009. Um, it's always bad when you have to pause to just <laughs> kind of <laughs> Like, what year are we in? Um, so definitely wasn't yesterday, um, but but not too long ago. And uh, I started my work every day at Daramus, a, a local CPA firm. Um, while I was at UM, I was helping my cousin, who was ex-president of Firehouse Cooper, start his firm, right? So, you know, I knew that I was going to graduate with, uh, you know, let's say a concentration in accounting, and I would like to pursue my master's and, you know, and, and the licensure after that. Um the experience there uh, on the audit side kind of opened the door for me to uh, work at a big four. I ended up joining uh, PwC, and then I was there for about five years. Um, my main client was Ryder, uh, which is a logistics company down here in South Florida. <laughs> You're smiling. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I love Ryder. That's a, that's a, it's, it's one of the great companies down here, uh, yeah. I, I think, in, in South Florida. So I was really blessed to, to be, you know, uh, Working there, cutting my teeth, long hours, as everyone knows. Um, but it was, you know, through that process and the big firm, obviously, you know, uh, at PwC, you know, they're doing a lot more things than just, you know, local audit, audits or, or, you know, uh, taxes, right? There, there's, you know, once at PwC, you kind of get exposed to like the broader world, okay, mm -hmm. the business world. And, um, you know, a, a lot to do with, you know, where the profession is going and, and, and how things, um, are shaping up for for the rest of the industry so um that really inspired me uh to you know take a let's say a deeper look in terms of hey what what problems you mentioned problems right so so what mm -hmm. problems all, every startup starts because you're trying to solve an, a current existing problem that no one else is solving right if not right, you don't exactly. really have much viability right so yeah. um and you know every industry has you know um has has issues right so if you could find solutions to those issues identify them correctly you may have you may be onto something and um you know particularly what inspired me was was the the fact that that we were cpas um we were working working really long hours right um but maybe didn't have the flexibility to let's say like so much an uber driver <laughs> at mm -hmm. the time uh, uber was fairly new in miami back then um to say hey look i wish i could just make an extra 10k 15k i'm really happy with my w2 i'm really happy with my health care i'm really happy with the people i work with i love the challenging projects i'm working on but you know like everyone else if i just had a little more right mm -hmm. and um so I, I i looked uh you know around the internet um some marketplaces like fiverr um where you could kind of go in and offer your services but then you you know you really have to treat it as a 
let's say a full on business. It wasn't really easy to just say, Hey, I'm a CPA. I want to lever my license, uh, to work on, you know, let's say either things I specialize in or at, get exposure and things I can't get the opportunity to get exposed to right here currently at PwC, but I know I could handle cause I passed the exam, you know, let's say in taxes or something like that. Right. Right. Um, and there wasn't really any viable solutions, right? So it started off as basically an idea of providing uh, side hustle work to CPAs, leveraging their license. Obviously, it's still at the core. That's you know eight years later. That that still is what tax file is right now. You know we have five thousand CPAs and IRS enrolled agents mm-hmm. on our platform um, that you know do taxes, but 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 other things beyond taxes. You know bookkeeping, quarterly estimates, consultations. Mm-hmm. Uh, cleanup work. Uh, so, um, but the inceptioning idea was was simply that, like, how can I further empower the licensure, right, uh, beyond currently what it is and in its current state, and and the way that that we handled that and 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 are handling that problem and attacking it right now is by creating a platform that allows you to easily log in, you know, without you know, say a a robust storefront that you have to build and invest capital and take risk into, right? So minimizing that that upfront risk, you could dip your toe and, you know, like I said, any of these different types of swim lanes, and then you make side money. Mm-hmm. I love it. I love it. So essentially, it's an Uber type platform where you can connect folks that want to um, work on projects with employers that need help working on projects. So it's bringing those two worlds together, like you said, without even needing a brick and mortar storefront. So that's awesome. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. I love and now it. it's it, now it's just you know it goes beyond just doing a tax return. You know, you can work mm-hmm. for different firms. You know, we have you know outsourcing the rage right now, right? So obviously we have yeah. you know, B two B outsourcing, mm-hmm. uh, where we provide our staffing solution, right? And you know, in, in parallel to if you're doing offshore, we're essentially onshore, right? So you could see mm-hmm. how that kind of matches up for your firm and if it's the right fit. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I mean, in simple terms, you kind of created this this gig network of CPAs. So maybe um, I know it's probably a long explanation, but maybe in, in short explanation, how does the platform work and, and how can you be that bridge? So how does a firm that wants to connect with a CPA connect with a CPA that's ready to do work for them and vice versa? How does it work? Yeah, explaining this five years ago was a lot more difficult than it is right now because I feel like <laughs> everyone hasn't, you know, or has at least looked at a offshore or onshore outsourcing mm-hmm. you know, um, solution. So, uh, similar to to those other solutions, right? You you, you know, you want to assess essentially, you know, how much work you're doing, where your shortcomings are, where would you like to make margin, right? You want to take a look at your staff and say, well. I want these people here to, let's say, let go of this work so that I could have them focus on higher revenue generating activities or more relationship work or, or selling more or consulting more, whatever it is, right? Um, and after you kind of do that, that that assessment, you know, uh, you, you basically you're looking at your commoditizable services, repeatable services, right, that that are part of the package or whatever they provide back to your clients. And you're saying, okay, this is this is a good this is maybe a good fit for outsourcing, right? So we will come in, we we would we will look at that work and. <laughs> Quite frankly, we, we unlike you know, let's say traditional outsourcing where uh, you, you get charged per hour or by page or something like that. This is straight up um, a fixed price, right? So it's like, hey, Got how it. many 1040s? Well, you know, we'll do it for I don't know, 100 bucks, mm-hmm. and then you know, you you make a commitment, and then we, we kind of build off that, right? So it's, it, the the onboarding process is is fairly simple. Um, because it's 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 licensed CPAs um, here in the in, in the U.S. Right, uh, we want to take a look at the exact type of 1040. Right, do we have Schedule mm-hmm. F's in there? Right, um, you know, I've we we own firms like you know because we also own some firms um, in Montana, mm-hmm. um, you know, where there's a lot of Schedule F work. And you know, if you're you know not from let's say the Midwest, you know, maybe the, you know you don't have local specialty in those areas. Right, so. Mm-hmm. You might be a firm that's turning away work, right? Letting revenue go out the door that you could otherwise just bring in, maintain a relationship, right? And pass that work on to the staff, right? So mm-hmm. our staff and uh, and supported by our uh, CS team here, customer success team here, mm-hmm. um, we'll create a, a complete onboarding plan, you know, um, you know, making sure that we get a good assessment as to what we're going to be doing, that you have the right pros on the network. Um, doing it, the API and you know our, our kind of software, you know, does all that in the background automatically. But 
you know, as far as what the firm is concerned with is like basically how many CPAs will I get for how much work, you know, during what time, when do I need to have client documents ready? Where do I upload them to? Right. Mm -hmm. And, and then we do a good job of, of, of onboarding all that and, and, and providing the training for whoever you're going to be handing the torch off to. I love it. I love it. I love what you just said too, about, you know, getting them connected to professional CPAs. So maybe touch on a little bit, how do you vet the CPAs to make sure that they are quality, that their, their license is in good standing, you know, those types of things to mitigate that type of risk for the employers? Yeah. So uh, similar to if you're just going to hire someone at your firm, mm -hmm. you mm -hmm. know, you, you do an interview and hopefully sure. do some background checks, right? It, it, we go through the same process, right? So we interview them here. Um, we have an entire department dedicated to, let's say, the the, the, the nurturing, development, and, and um, uh, the management of, of our pros, okay? Uh, so we have a pro department. And we go through, we do, uh, in a partnership with Checker, we'll do background checks. Uh, we have an API plugin to uh, cpaverified.org, obviously, mm -hmm. to make sure that there hasn't been, you know, any ethical things on the licensure or it's still in good standings or CPs are up to credit, right? Um, and then post all that basic stuff. Um, they essentially submit a resume and we have a team that just is, you know, taking hundreds of phone calls a day. That's all they do um, that just are on the phone. And uh, we connect with every single one of these pros, right? So, we, you know, this is your first time outsourcing. They'll be pretty important, right? Like, do you have a small shop? Is this part-time, right? All right. these things. And, and we've been doing it for eight years, right? So we feed that all into the algo. We feed that all into uh, our software, right? So that when, let's say, unique needs pop up, right? Um, we, you know, it's not just like looking through Ro Rolodex, right? You know, they say, Hey, we have candidate X, Y, and Z. They're available from this time of the year to this time of the year. You know, they have history in this type of work. Um, they're usually available for, for this many hours. And then all that kind of gets condensed to a figure, right? So how mm -hmm. many, um, how many pros will be needed per engagement? Um, so, so I'll say post, um, post and resume submission. There's a real conversation that happens with them. And then before right. they get assigned to a job, um, we usually go through another um, round of, of vetting. Usually, you know, in this B2B, right, in this outsourcing space, uh, we would like to also just use people that have history on the platform, you know, so mm -hmm. uh, they've actually have performed work on the platform delivered on in prior years. Got it. Got it. Got it. Well, and I know that you've talked a little bit about different API feeds and what have you. So maybe for our folks that aren't as technology savvy, you and I have talked over the years about the actual software and how it can integrate in um, with firms so that they're not having to, to go to separate places to, to download and import and what have you. Can you talk a little bit about that for those that are trying to figure out like, oh, gosh, is this going to be a whole other thing that I have to manage? If I use yeah. it, you know, no, actually, and that was a blocker to take any deals done years ago, right? Because a, mm -hmm. a managing partner just kind of wants to get the work, and you know, well, I, I see it's a good idea, but this person here wants to train them, and that person doesn't really want to get trained right now, right? Uh, so, you know, how effective are we going to be at accomplishing our mutual goals here to make this partnership a success, right? So, over the years, that's evolved into a bunch of different things that we put into place to make that easier, right? So let's say you're a Walters Cooler CCH shop, shop, right? So you have access tax, okay? And you have, you know, um, other type of work management tools that they that they offer, whatever they may be, right? Um, we have everything from virtual machines that, that we spin up on our side. So therefore you don't need to bring in your IT people that are already mm -hmm. compatible with those softwares, right? Mm -hmm. They'll be brought into the workspace that are synced with them, right? So that your team, because as much as possible, I mean, there obviously needs to be some level of minimal buy-in, right? It's sure, not, absolutely. Over, but you know, we're not we're not here managing multiple screens like I have right here on my desk at my office because yeah. I'm a tech yeah. company. Uh, but you know, your 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 employees are simply simply working through you know one portal, um, a defined let's say folder, right, to upload client docs, right, and and whatever process you know our customer success team wants handoff, you know, happens determines um to be the best fit it'll be around that right like how are you working right now um right because not everyone is on cch right so you know uh you know thompson reuter products right uh, we may you know we have our own kind of processes here we will analyze and and then we'll 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 do what we do the best we can to fit into those existing processes that's awesome yeah just make it as seamless and easy as possible really i mean that's that's the bottom line right which i know requires a lot of work on the back end for you guys but yeah. on the front end 
So, you know, you've been in the profession both as, you know, an employee at firms and big four and what have you, and then obviously developing the platform, uh, the platform, sorry, with TaxFile. And everything right now is around, uh, you know, pipeline challenges and pipeline shortages. And, and obviously, your platform is, is, a, is a major opportunity for a solution for employers that need help today. But there's a lot of stuff going on that could impact things long term too. And it's really a, a transformative time for the profession. Again, whether you're in public accounting or corporate finance, every every change is happening everywhere at a rapid pace. I'm super curious because you're just one of those people in the profession that I respect your um, expertise and your your forward thinking vision so much. What do you think um, it, it, you know broadly what does the future of accounting look like in the next five, 10 years or, or 20 years? What I want it to look like or what I, right? What do you think is going to happen? Give me your crystal ball. I, oh my gosh. But, but what do I, what do I want it to look like or what I think is going to happen? Here? Both. <laughs> Let's do both. <laughs> well, yeah, look, I, I'm obviously extremely biased because I'm a CPA, right? And right. Uh, there's nothing more mm-hmm. I want um, than, than for the profession to, to flourish and to grow. Um, like we were discussing before we got on, similar to like how like the nurse kind of sector had a resurgency 10, 15 years ago. Um, there's nothing more I want for our pipeline than than for that to happen, right? But in order for that to happen, you know, you know, kids in college, right, um, need to see that this is a viable career path that's not going to go extinct, you know, or completely 100% offshore in, in five years. So, um, you know, there's a lot of, uh, you know, let's say forces at play, right. That, 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 that determine that ideally um, what you would like is, you know, when you look at just, let's take a simple tax return deliverable, you have someone that came in to your, you know, to your doorstep um, as a lead that then converted to a client because they trust you. They trust the brand on your name. Uh, You know, well, well, your brand is your name, right. Sure. Uh, On your firm. And and they trust you with their most personal information, you know, as it relates to, to financial um, type of info. So uh, they come to you year in, year out. Right. Uh, you're basically, you know, their trusted party um, in terms of not just taxes, but in terms of how they're going to be managing their household and um, how they kind of take it from there. Right. Um, now, what does that mean? I, I think. I think that means is that you have two substantial elements to a any client, right? To to any book of business, to any any revenue stream, and that is a relationship kind of uh, focused um, 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 hours and work that that go into maintaining, retaining, and growing a book of business, right? And building trust with your clients. Um, that's equally, if not as important, as to how we get the work done. Mm-hmm. I think that there's been so much work on how do we get the work done, right? That this we've kind of taken our uh, our eye off the ball over here. Mm -hmm. Okay. And I see at the firms that, you know, we, that we own, I've seen it, you know, obviously before I started, you know, uh, tax file and in our early days when we were only, you know, doing, you know, small app returns. So, uh, yes, there, there's a dynamic on, you know, there, there's this dual dynamic of how do you get the work done? how do I grow a business? How do I maintain it? Right. But, but I, as, as a managing partner, right, it would be nice if we could say, all right, well, if I really wanted to grow this, like any other business, right. Mm-hmm. Like I understand that, that I've been a CPA and, you know, I'm a, uh, you know, it's, it's a partnership. So I'm, I'm producing the work as well as maintaining the work. Right. it will be really nice is, is, is if, as we go into the future, there's more specialty within the firm. Right. Mm-hmm. There's more specialty. And through that specialty, right, um, that some of the larger firms have for sure. Right. But the majority of the firms in the U.S. aren't large firms. Right. They're small firms. Right. But through that specialty, leveraging, you know, current technologies. Right. We could we could pitch more value. Right. More value prop to our younger pros. Right. Uh, to our younger students. Right. They're considering the profession. Right. Uh, to make it more attractive. Right. Hey, mm-hmm. you don't if you want to be a CPA, you don't have to you know, run a firm like a firm was run back in the 70s, right? Mm -hmm. You don't have to structure it that way, right? At the end of the day, 
right? You 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 need to have something that pays you, right? So you could put food on the table, and something that challenges you, and something that you enjoy, mm-hmm. right? So if you enjoy the relationship aspect, for example, of of building a book of business of you know in, in this let's say you know office of the CFO, um, you know let's say a type package that you you're considering offering as a CPA. Right. Well, then really lean into where those customers live, how you're going to go out, how you're going to market to them, how you're going to, you know, attach different products. Right? right. What do you need? Right. To service those products. Right. As opposed to just saying, you know, you know, Lavinia CPA, I'm going to put it up. I'm going to rent a, a spot out here in, in downtown Coral Gables and then I'll see what lands on my doorstep. Right. Right. Because because when when we take that approach. Right. And we bring that into the classroom. OK, I think that there's an opportunity to to broaden the horizon of of the pipeline. OK, mm-hmm. um, you now say, oh, wow, uh, there, there is opportunity beyond just working, you know, for for 60K or whatever it is. And right. I don't have to wait 30 years to make partner or whatever. Right. And I could do it differently and I could be my own boss earlier. Mm-hmm. Right. Uh, and that's really what the younger generation wants. As you know, they want flexibility. They want work-life balance. They like to be challenged, right? right? They work quick, right? And uh, for better, for worse, we have to kind of conform to that. Now, another force that's that's driving all this is, well, you know, the, the you know, let's say the firm's in place, right? You know, they're sending a lot of that work that that would have been used you know, to train people, you know, from the su- su- supply side, right, to, to give them additional exposure while they're within the, the the house of the partnership, you know, you know, offshore and, you know, and mm-hmm. or, or to different people that that may be falling outside of the licensure, right? So, you know, something has to give, something has to give, right? We, we could have a future uh, where we have a lot more engaged CPAs coming back, renewing their licensure, Right, building great businesses, providing great value to mm-hmm. you know to to the general population, right? Uh, not just through audits and tax, but other work that that may be coming up, right? Uh, mm-hmm. Software consulting, who better than than someone that's in crypto, right? To start learning about blockchain and you yeah. know create a boutique firm around that, right? But but structuring it, let's say in a modern way. Yeah. Um, there's a ton of there's a ton of TAM there, you know. There's a ton of TAM there. There's a massive market, right? The reason why we exist is because the, the market has been underserved, right? The the, the general right. population has been underserved, right? you know. Um, so, um, the solution is more CPAs, not less CPAs. Mm-hmm. And, and in order to get more CPAs, well, we have to create a clear path as to why this is a great profession. You know, what can you expect? You know, how much can you make, and where are your opportunities going to come from? Yeah, I love that. And I love, um, I've been thinking about that word modernized a lot myself too, especially in the wake of all of these these licensure debates that have been, you know, been having in the profession over the last year or two and what that looks like and what the pathway to licensure looks like. And for me, ultimately, it becomes how do we how do we modernize the licensure pathway? But bigger than that, it's how do we modernize the license? So I love what you said about the work itself. It's it's about almost redefining what the work is and how we do it is is that is the roadmap for how we can think about success in the long term for the pipeline well, and, really, and something that the you, you know what would you what would you think here like what would you what, what would you say would you say that that in that future state in that modern state that, mm-hmm. that you know off off the cuff example that i gave where you know let's say we're doing blockchain you know right. boutique cpa firm consulting right, right? and uh, financial planning or, you know, all this great stuff, cool stuff, right? But also doing taxes and audit, right? Um, sure. That's part of it, right? Um, would you say that as a customer, I would want to go to one of those boutique shops that's providing me this this value um, if I knew that they were, you know, the rubric for the licensure was was lower and easier to get into or mm-hmm. harder, you know, to right. kind of get into, right? It's like, right. like the, the value has to be increased right if we're going to increase the value for the clients then then we have to raise the bar on on you know the the provider side as well on the supply Mm -hmm. side right on on the professional side right so the answer isn't oh it's pipeline it's a volume issue right we're we're going to just devalue this stuff right and then you have you know just i don't know like like you know cogs in a wheel right and you just have you know just 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 a body body in body out right I think the answer is is more specialty, mm-hmm. right? 
but more value prop, right? Like make it right. make it more like a, a a PhD and and less like you know something else. Yeah, yeah. No, it's it's um it's fascinating to think about, and I know a lot of people have a lot of different opinions on what they think is right or wrong in that conversation. But I think what I love most about you, and what I've always respected most about you, is that you're you're always thinking in the future, right? It's it's how can we get to this end game and and think about it differently than we've ever done before, which is exactly why TaxFile was created. You saw a need and a gap that existed within the profession and, and went out and solved for it and created a platform that could help to, to bridge that divide. So we're so grateful to count you as a partner at the Institute, and, and I'm grateful to count you as a friend within the profession. So thank you so much. Um, any closing words that you want to hit on before we uh, say goodbye <laughs> no, I, today? I, I any in, any, in, any in, moments of inspiration? <laughs> any moment of inspiration? On a, yeah, on a, on a positive note, I, I think that the desire is there, right? I think if, if yeah. you know, you go back to, to, to the kids in school and say, hey, uh, you know, yeah, it's hard, you know, to get a CPA license as it should be because of, you know, the, the, sure. the things that we mentioned, but here's where you get at the other end of it. You know, this is what the opportunity, you know, this is where you break in through, right? You, you're going to break through this glass ceiling, right? And, and, and with this licensure, it will empower you to, to, you know, do X, Y, and Z in this, in, in this manner and earn X amount of dollars, right? While serving, you know, uh, the general interests of, of, of the population. And, um, I think that that's that. I think that's the way that we kind of need to, you know, lean into. Um, no, I, I, and then at the end of the day, simply providing a value prop, right, and, and pitching it, and take, and, you know, approaching it as a pitch to these kids, and saying, "Hey, this is why you should be a CPA, right? It makes sense. It's worth your time. It's worth the risk. It's worth the sacrifice, right? Mm -hmm. And it's worth the challenge. That's what young people want. They want to be challenged." And they want to be rewarded when they, you know, when they meet that challenge, right? And when they rise up to the occasion, right? And there's nothing more inspiring than that, you know. So whatever we could do, you know, on 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 the private side, you know, working with you guys there at the FICPA, which you guys have been doing a fantastic job, to be honest. Um, you know, I, I you know, I tr I don't travel the state of Florida as much as you do up and down, but I do every now and then, and and you know, everyone is uh, and, you know, and, and the state's in a great shape, you know. So so thank you, thank you guys for that. Um, but you know, I think the as we move forward, we need to lean into that more, right? We really need to take a fresh look in terms of, okay, guys, what are we selling here? How can we get this into the hands of our most talented kids in school, right? And mm -hmm. and make sure that they stick with the, with, with the licensure. No doubt. What is that value prop? Like you said, yeah. right? Yeah. So, yeah. well, Ricky, thank you again for everything. I'm so excited. Hopefully this won't be the last of these CEO conversations that we film. We can make these a, a regular occurrence as we're thinking about things in the future, but also thinking about how tax file can help our member firms and our corporate finance organizations from across the, the beautiful state of Florida here. And of course, if you are a CPA that is looking to pick up some additional work, maybe you are a newly licensed CPA that's kind of building out your own firm, or you're a recently retired CPA that's looking to do a little bit of work here and there, but maybe not work full time or anything in between, um, certainly reach out to TaxFile and get connected to their platform. We'll include all the appropriate links um, when we launch this conversation for ease of access to get over to Ricky and his team. And if you are in South Florida and in beautiful Coral Gables, I know a few of our, our most uh, favorite members are down there in the Gables right next door to you, Ricky, please feel free to stop by and see them in person as well. But I wish you all the very best. Uh, be safe and be well. And thanks again, Ricky. We'll Thank talk you. to you soon. All right, see Bye. You.